course, you know, waiting on Tommy Hicks, you know. Pat, he's been here for a half hour, sitting here waiting for us to come out of the hotel. Of course, you know, we didn't get up here till like one o'clock in the morning. And of course, you know, we got to sleep a whole three and a half hours. But when you're as excited as we are, that is no doubt plenty of sleep. Hey, I'll tell you what, Pat. How's it going, man? I'm good. How you doing? I'm doing awesome. I love the way your new truck looks right there. Yeah. All magged out. Good. Yep. Hey, so we are going out to Standard Rock, and uh, I'll tell you, it is uh, probably my favorite place to fish, and the chances of catching a giant, giant lake trout this time of year are as good as they get. Yeah, it's good. The numbers are a little, usually down a little bit, but the size is usually there, so I'm so, okay with that. Yeah, and so everybody, just so everybody knows, we are not going out looking for numbers of fish. We are going out trying to catch a giant lake trout. That's yep. what it's all about. So we're going out about 38 miles. Well, look at, there he uh, is. you finally get, got <laughs> up. Good morning. <laughs> right. And this is the guy that got up here at, uh, you know, four o'clock yesterday afternoon, right? And yeah. got had all day to do whatever he does and, and he's yeah, about as pokey as they get. Good. Got a little massage when they rolled in the towel. Did you? <laughs> oh, a massage? I did. How much did that cost? Just 20 bucks. Oh, <laughs> 20, 20 bucks. bucks. Right. All right, everybody, hang on your hiney. Maybe overkill, but not for a 50 pounder. Did you get to stop at the gas station this morning? You know, that would have been really handy. Maybe I a bottle of water, Larry, maybe a restroom break. I asked him twice and he's like, Apple is what he said. <laughs> Where is he at right now? Right here. Against the tree somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Should be good. What do you think? Hey everybody, welcome back. We finally made it out here to Standard Rock. We're about 40 miles offshore. Pat's right now looking for some of the humps and we're gonna see if we can grab some of these fish real quick. And basically what we're gonna be doing is all jigging out here in this deep water. And I'll tell you what, Tommy, this is exciting. I know there's not one person in this boat that's not absolutely jacked up about getting these lines in the water right away. For sure. The chances of catching a giant lake trout, like we're talking a lake trout over 40 pounds, are extremely good today. We got good conditions. We're gonna, we've are gonna. we got a short window. There's a bunch of wind coming in. Yep. And this is one place you do not want to be when that wind picks up. So let's get these rods in and get some fish on the line. Larry. Yeah. What are you doing? Huh? You always. Throw a penny I throw it. Silver dollar to catch a 50 pounder. You work your way up. Oh, you do. Look at it. You can see it going down forever. What do you mean, dead stick in it? I was just swimming it like a just a slow herring, you know, barely just right. just like that. There's a fish up, dude. It's big. Like how far? There's no way that's a bait. Uh, five foot. Five foot on the foot. bottom. Yeah. Big red mark. Got him. Got him. Oh, oh I lost. Oh, you suck. Fish on! Good one? Woo! It's not a monster. Oh, come off. Oh, damn it! Hey, wait. Didn't you just give me a bunch of heat for losing one? What are you doing? Huh? You always. Throw a penny in? I'd throw a silver dollar to catch a 50 well, no, pounder. The day goes on. You work your way up to Oh, the you do. Look at that. You can see it going down forever. Then he gets them. <laughs> you catch as more damn fish with that thing. Keep it right down on the water. Is he on there? Keep going. Good way to start the morning off, I'll tell you that. At least it's a fish. It's not a 40 pounder, but. We've had quite a few short bites. We have. And, fish on and you said that it's seconds. probably a sm smaller fish. Yeah. That one you had hooked up on a couple minutes ago the first had the one rod. Good. Yeah, had yeah. the rod boat over nice. This is, could just be a good eater. I'm going to not net him? You're not going to net him? No. I'm going to tell you something. If it's small, it's going in the pan. Here we go. Oh. Larry, dinner, 
is served. If there's something I'm gonna put on the pan though. That is a perfect size right there. Is there a size limit on Lake Trout? 15 inches. Oh, we're good there. Yep. Not really, no. Lake Trout aren't really that picky, so I use Moonshine, but I've caught them on pretty much everything. Cleo's, any kind of casting spoon. I like a little bit heavier. So but. basically what you're doing is just casting it out in the back, and you're leaving the bale open, and when it hits the bottom, you basically just start winding the back up. Yep. A little better one, a little better than the one I caught. Yeah, a little better, but it's yeah. definitely a slow start to the morning. Yeah. The bigger ones you bring up much slower so their their bladder doesn't uh, get big like that. And they're feeding on burbot, herring, um, coho. I, I caught one last year with like a 25 inch coho in its belly. Oh, man. How big was that fish? It's only like 14 pounds. Oh, so oh. it just kind of goes to show you how big of a bait, you know, a 10 or 15 pounder will eat. Bye-bye. He's bragging about catching a 17 inch at Standard Rock. <laughs> it's a fish, it's a start. <laughs> oh! Damn it, you suck. Oh, did he bite light and he had some weight too? Lost it again, you dude. You gotta be, you're freaking. And that was wrong. a funk. Something's wrong. I think it's really important to have that stinger hook on there. Today, yeah, for you know, sure. Just judging on the bite, and we're getting all short hips and losing fish. So stinger hook is. Pat, you? I never use them. Never. You, don't, you lose way too many fish on them. Holy man! You see the arguments going on. One here? lake trout champion against the other. I mean, show us how you hook a smelt. I mean, I just saw Scott the way he had that hooked up, and he told him hey, reel that back in, it doesn't look right. And I, you could see by watching it in the water that that jig didn't look natural at, at all. Yep. And there's, you know, lake trout can be picky like any other fish. And sometimes I'm just using it, literally cutting it right behind the gills, small. Yep. Kind of depends on the bait. And so how do you actually hook it on the, the jig? And do you, do you put the stinger into the bait? If I got, it's like say on this big jig, you right. know, I would run a full smelt if they're really active and I'm going to set the stinger in it just so it stays away. But okay. the reason I'm not using just a head is because I want that stinger to be kind of covered by that bait. So when okay. I go on through the head, you know, I'm going to go down through the bottom of the jaw. Right. Out through the head. So that's key right there. Try to make the smallest hole you can so they don't rip themselves off. But see, when this thing's swimming though, this stinger is really, you can even stick one end of it just in some meat. But it's kind of covered up by that smelt, so it's not a stinger dangling behind your bait. You Makes know? a lot of sense. And then always put your knot back up, you know, even after, we're not pulling it up every fish because we're so deep, but put your knot so that bait's swimming. Just like you would ice fishing. Just fish like you would anything, okay. walleye fishing, anything. You don't want that jig to hang like this. Right. I want it swimming, you know? And actually, I don't know, did you tie this on? I did. I would probably tie well, to let's here. Re <laughs> <laughs> right, well, let's retie it then. Did you you miss missing? One? We are missing them today. We need a little ripple, but the problem is when the little ripple comes, the six footers are coming right. with it. Well, so. we're staying out here until we get six. I don't care. Tell my kids I love them. Come on. Nice job, Pat. Good yeah. Was that on the spoon better. again? You and yeah. that dang spoon, you're killing me with that spoon, brother. You know, and you're looking at a place like this, Standard Rock. You know, you guide out here, you've been guiding out here forever is that you wouldn't think, there's typically not a lot of boats out here, so you wouldn't think the boat traffic would even bother these fish because, you know, it's not like they get driven over all the time. Oh, that's a beautiful fish. So that is a big lamprey mark on him, huh? Look at the size of that lake trout. <laughs> that is so cool. Wow. Oh, oh, there he goes. Oh. Mister, I don't want a net. Look at that reel. I don't want to, I don't need, I don't need a net. I'll grab that lake trout, right? Yeah. Hey, I'll tell you what, Pat. I cannot get over how busy you are at the shop. You know, no doubt people know what quality is. And you know, the mags rods have been going over like wildfire, haven't they? Yeah, I actually had to 
call in sick today to come out here. That was kind of nice. You know, like this spring, you know, we use a lot of rip and wraps. We do a lot of, you know, plastics. Oh, and so you want a rod to match the baits that you're using so you can get the maximum performance out of them baits. And that's the cool part about what you're doing. Your passion, no doubt, Pat, you used to be a, a, a fighter, but your passion, no doubt, is, is fishing. Yep. So you know what rod is gonna work for what baits because you yeah. use a lot of different types of baits. Woo, that is a nice fish. Come on, Scotty. Oh my gosh! Oh, what is the what's right the deal up. doing? Oh my god! He, you're losing. I don't know. He <laughs> is losing. Jeez. Tommy Hicks of all the people is definitely losing it. Nice job, really, Pat. That really is awesome. That way to yeah. They are so yeah. beautiful. I love the that coloring. Nice job. Holy man! <laughs> Tommy, <laughs> this is what we're looking for. Oh my god! Dude. You guys. This thing is oh, humongous! Oh my god. Oh. He stole my jig! Ah. <laughs> I just want to see it. <laughs> oh my god. It, it was just like a wall. Oh! It's a giant! Oh, that's a nice fish. Nice fish. Oh, look how pretty these fish are. I love that you can see them so far down. Oh, oh nice yeah! Hat. Woo! I love these Mags custom rods. I'll tell you what, it is just an absolutely hoot to come out here this far out and basically be out in the middle of nowhere and nobody around having, it's not a 50 pounder, but it's he a sure dang like nice one fish. First. Boy, did he did. hold his own. Oh, oh it is amazing. You know, I thought for sure that fish was going to be at least over 30, you know. But like Pat says, you know, you get them around that 20 pound range, some of them fight harder than these <laughs> super giants. That's the third one today That's an with old marks on them. Too. Yeah. What a pretty fish. That's wow. a good fish. You gotta love that. Do mm. you think these fish basically live out here their whole lives? Uh, I think, yeah, all these fish do. Every once in a while you'll catch a tagged one from, uh, you know, Marquette or Keweenaw. Okay. But uh, when they spawn, they move up on the shallows on the structure. Right now we're fishing deeper flats this time of year. That's the best part I love about fishing out here, letting them go. Look at that. Come back when you're 50. Built for fishermen, built by fishermen. Um, really, that says it all. It's the family here. It's it's not a big, big conglomerate. It's a family. They treat you, you feel like you're in a family, you know. When you put those two together, an amazing product and amazing people, it's just the type of company you want to be involved with. Not only because of just the great boats, but because of the camaraderie that the Warrior family has. The customer service is amazing. Uh, they never leave you hanging. So come join the Warrior family. It feels good. It feels yeah. stay pinned. I got to get one to the boat. Right. You've had enough on. Yeah, I've had a lot of fish on. Double. Double. Woo, I'm loving it. This is the standard rock I know. I'm going back in. Ooh, that one's going on the grill right there, Larry. Really? Yeah, I got a little guy. Giants. Giants. Nice job, buddy. Pat's got one. Hooked up, hooked up. Oh. Now we're on. Come on, Scotty, join the crew. <laughs> yeah, I see you coming up. We're going with the beetle. This is what we use out in the islands, bobbing. Yeah, well, I was trying not to do it because we got four guys jigging on a boat and this thing's going to swim away. So at least if I don't catch a fish, I'm going to catch somebody. I need to get me a wire, a 238. Oh, a 238. I need a 238. Kent, are you listening? That was on the jig too, huh? As soon as we started drifting. Wow. You always say that spot locking is not your way to fish out here. That was something before when you were reeling up and there was five or six more lake trout, you know, right on the other lake trout, you know. Basically, you see that happen quite a bit. Nice All right. Job, nice job. Do you think time of day makes a big difference out here? I know you always like uh, mornings, but you've, you've, you've been telling me, and so has Tommy, that some of your bigger fish actually come later in the morning. Yeah, it just kind of depends on... Conditions, kinda, huh? Yeah, and the moon, really. Like, usually full moons, that first light for me anyway out here is not that great. Okay. But that middle of the day bite can be a little better. What do you know about, what, six, seven times bigger? A spoon again, huh? No, again, what made you decide to go back to the spoon? 
because nothing else is working. So, <laughs> um, yeah, and even like when I'm trolling inshore, I'll catch the majority of my bigger fish, like in the middle to the higher water column. And it, but it's hard because when you see all them fish on towards the bottom, it's hard not to go down there and drop your bait down there and fish them. Oh yeah, yeah, drop it. Well, oh, there is one right there. See him? Yep, yeah, get him, get him, get him, give him the bite. Watch. Oh, he's going he's right going, for your bait. He's going. he's going. Oh, he went right past. A lot of times, I'll tell my clients to like, if you see them, let them swim. Don't just rip them up because if you rip them up after another fish. It's spooks them, huh? Bite. Never gonna bite. So now that's. Gonna, that's a nice fish, yeah. but nice job. I love the color. Boy, look how stocky these one. fish yeah, are too. Fish. Yeah, what is the difference? You see a lot of them are dark and some of them are lighter. A lot of different variations in the coloring. Yeah, I'm really not. I think sure, at cause, home it's because some of the ones that sit in the rocks more, mm -hmm. it changes their color. You know, like when we get fish over by certain islands, they'll be like this. And then you go to the other island where it's not as rocky, not as much structure, yeah. and they'll be more. Hey, I'll tell you what, everybody. We got blown off of Lake Superior, and you can tell by the conditions that came in here. You can tell by this front that came in here and the wind. It's a good thing that we did get off in time. You know, sometimes I don't like to listen to Pat and Tommy when it comes to getting off the water. I'd rather stay out there, but no doubt they made the right decision. Pat has got a brand new shop where he builds Meg's custom rods and we're gonna go in there and check out the manufacturing and we're gonna show you guys why you need to order rods from Pat here at Meg's. Hey Pat, you know, I was in your old shop when you first started a few years ago and uh, boy, what a big difference. This looks absolutely great. The main reason why your business has grown so fast and so good is because the great rods, I mean the custom rods, that you're building are just absolutely awesome, you know? So let's kind of go through the shop here and let's kind of show people really the differences of what you're doing versus what other people are doing. This is our cork room. We do all of our custom cork here. And no, uh, when it comes to cork, let's talk a little bit about that. I don't know a ton about cork, but I know there's different grades of cork. Yeah. So when somebody wants to buy a rod, what grade of cork do they, uh, like where do you start? How do you know? So we have a bunch of different burls. So this is uh, some of the best cork you can get straight from Portugal. And we have it in just a bunch of different styles. Now I want to know, does really the cork have anything to do with sensitivity at all? Um, or feel? No, it just, it's a traditional for the rods. A lot of um, guys just like it because it's just traditional, it looks good, it feels good. And this style of cork, it's durable, this will last forever. So you're saying right now he's putting epoxy on and that's what's going to seal that cork in place? Uh, that's that's a, a glue, okay. a epoxy glue, so he's gluing the handle on right now. And we've already turned this cork and we sealed it so that's protected. We try to keep like a pre-built line and a custom line just because there's a lot of guys out there that do not want to wait for They want that rod now, yeah. right? Our They're impulsive around, buyers like me. Yep. Right. Our turnaround time on a custom is usually seven to 10 days, which is pretty quick, but guys don't even want to wait that. So we try to keep our stock rods ready to go. They usually ship within a day. Okay. And then if you want a custom, you know, it's seven to ten days. So, so these are all different pieces of cork yep. right here, huh? Every half inch is a different piece of cork. Pull them off so I got to ask, I just saw him running thread across the opposite way. I, I've never knew that you did that. I thought the thread just always spun right through there. When he's wrapping the guide, what's this thread going this way for? Oh, so he put that in there. I see, I never knew that. It's a loop. Okay. So you wrap over that loop and then you put the tag in through it and it wraps it, it pulls it under and uh, cinches it in. Everything here is done in the right shop, shop, start to finish. And you are the quality control yeah, manager. Yeah, I still ship almost all the rods on, just because, you know, you, I still want to keep that quality top notch. That's and I huge. will keep it top notch. This is uh, the finishing here. So he's applying the epoxy right now. We do two coats. Fully cured. I see that all these rod racks in here, if whatever is that, if, 
Is that what you call them? But they're all, it, it, it just spins the rod. Yeah, on. it just dries them evenly. Okay. It's a self leveling epoxy. So if you didn't turn them, they would just sag and drip off. Okay. So we, we got enough to do about 40, 45 rods right now. This is our ice rod dryer. So this is like a, a drum style. We can do about 16 ice rods on that. So I'm getting one that's like eight feet. Holy for man. water rods, so we can do about 80 to 100 at a time. How many guides do you put on each rod? How do you know how many, how to space them out? And how many different types of guides is there? You just have to put them on there, flex it, and the line, you put a reel on there, and the line will tell you where the guides need to go. That's interesting. And okay. I always go more than less because the more guides, the better. You get better casting, and you get just a better uh, action out of your rod. So I do nine guides in a tip top on... Uh, almost all of my walleye rods. Okay. I do about five to six running guides, and I mean, you can cast a mile with these rods, and when you have them loaded up, it's just a perfect uh, angle on the line. Hey everybody, want to give special thanks again this week to all of our law enforcement agents for keeping our homes and our cities safe. No doubt that they do an extraordinary great job, and thanks again for everything that you guys and gals do. And remember, like I always say, we are still living in the greatest country in the world as of today. And no doubt, and I mean no doubt, it is a great day to be alive. Hey, we'll see you next week. I'm not worried. I'm not worried. I just want to make sure I can throw this for one of you guys if you need it. You know what? I got in the room and Tommy must have took a power nap because he wouldn't shut up. There yeah. was a little, small piece of poo. <laughs> that is so disgusting, dude. And sure, it came by twice. How big was like, it? It was just, it was like a kid poop. Maybe. You know, he hit that hot water. That or I'm getting really old and it was just me. <laughs>